Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Quantum Talk and we've got a special guest today. Her name is Corinne and she also does quantum but on a slightly different in a slightly different way than what we are used to doing it with the muscle testing and the trauma. But I think the two ways of doing it really complement each other. So I wanted to interview Corinne and I wanted her to share a little bit about who she is where she studied and what she does. So Corinne, I'm going to give it over to you and Natanya and I may interrupt you every now and then to comment or ask a question if you don't mind. No, please, thank you. Thank you, Alzan, and thank you for your time. Um, yes, I'm an occupational therapist with a special interest in, in metaphysical psychology. So I also actually did a degree in that. And I've been in psychiatric practice for almost um, 80, 18 years, not 80, um, 18 years. and um, I actually was still always longing for something deeper because I had a revelation about um, how the spirit and the soul and the um, body operate as a unit and in unity and, and nothing of the uh, conventional and allopathic medicine actually taught me something of that. So I actually went on an exploration of my own. I, I took a sabbatical in 2015 and then actually loads of things happened to me. And um, actually my, my quest for life was actually, I think, um, based upon lo lots of traumas that happened in my own life as well. So not, nothing satisfied me or nothing actually got me to the point where I knew that um, this actually can make a difference until I discovered the quantum things and also the Heart Math Institute, which I will talk about a little later. But um, I was at a, a camp 12 years ago um, and uh, by that time I was still um, in full practice occupational therapy in a psychiatric hospital where we did um, group therapy uh, for people with anxiety and depression, etc. But um, at that camp, a lady came to me and she said to me that you are like somebody that um, can tune pianos, but she didn't know me from anywhere. She just came to me on that um, um, camp, the, the last day of the camp, and she said, you are like someone that can tune pianos. You can see or hear if somebody is out of tune, and then you can bring them into tune again. And then she said, but, and I, well, that but, but she said, but, you just need to learn to play again. Play first and then you'll be able to help others get in tune. So actually what she was saying to me, you out of tune yourself. So wow. you get into tune yourself because if you're in tune, then you've got a different frequency um, actually. Mm. And, that, and only then you can influence um, other people. So I didn't understand it back then, but that actually obviously unlocked some other door, which I actually, or rabbit hole rather, that I started to follow. And um, it was quite a journey, like I've said, it's 12 years back. So it took me more or less 10 years to start to play again. And the beautiful thing about that is, I think that is what complement um, your, your work, Alzheimer's, is where people find healing for their souls and spirit um, because that actually will help them to start to play again and to get into tune. Um, mm. And everything that is not in tune in our lives actually make um, a sound, I think. Um, mm. It sound, releases a frequency. It releases a fre frequency, yes. So this morning I was jogging and I asked, uh, what is... What, what does it mean to be present and how is it important? And um, I just got this and I'll, I'm going to read it because it's something I just got and I thought I'll just write it down. So I'll, I'll, I'll translate it as well. So um, sorry for if there's any um, stumbling upon words. So um, I, when I asked the question while I was um, jogging is uh, why should we be present and what is it to be present and how to be present? because there is something really significant in the present moment. And even if you look at it in a quantum perspective, but to be present is, is when our, our body, soul, and spirit are in unity. And they can't be in, in unity if there's some uh, soul wounds or 
spiritual things as you know so they need to be in, in in unity but my thing was always the body why did god design us the way he did there must be something significant in the body we we should be able to use our bodies to influence environments or people and i and i based my questions to the lord upon um the scriptures where peter's shadow healed people so i wanted to know how's that and um is Alzon still there yeah she's coming okay. back just continue okay so um so if we are in tune in our bodies if our mind soul and spirit are in alignment or function as a unit or unit in unity then we like a tuning fork and we become like a tuning fork for the heavenlies mm -hmm. and then um if we like that then we can start to serve others with our essence whatever that is and and if we start to, to, to serve them like our s with our essence it's like we are putting our five loaves and two fishes out there and it expand expands upon us mm. so that is what i got this morning while i was jogging so i still need to i, I think think about it to understand it properly yes so i just quickly want to interrupt you there because the yeah. the jews have this saying where they speak about tikkun ulam and that basically means to bring healing to the nations, to bring healing to earth. And what they mean by that is you, your function here on earth is to redeem the society around you back to a place where it's like a little garden of Eden, where we're wow. restored back to that community and that intimacy with God. And the only way you can do that is not by showing out the faults of other people, but by actually fixing yourself and in your in your wholeness lifting others up and supporting others and and that's what i you you say when you're speaking about the tuning fork of that resonance that you have inside of you is something heavenly and that then picks the people around you up and and that's what they they call it they call it tukun ulam wow that's beautiful that's really yes. beautiful and yeah. I'd just like to comment as well, because something that's interesting for me about Corinne's story is that there was, you had this knowledge of what you studied and what you taught your own clients. And then you went through something where you struggled yourself and you had to overcome. And now you're not teaching people from a place of just knowledge. You're teaching people from a place of intimacy. I know what this is like to feel anxious, to not be in tune. And I really feel like when you counsel people from that perspective, you are a better counselor because you're not counseling with head knowledge, you're counseling with experience knowledge. So I think that's amazing how the Lord uses the difficult times in our life to bring us to a place where we can then help others. You are that beautiful, you are definitely. So um, that actually took me 10 years to discover all those, those things. And I think the key word year was to get in tune and i think that is what your job is actually about all about as well so um i asked loads of questions so i'm that why person um i think i irritated the lord at, 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 at some stage because i just always kept on asking why and then he revealed something to me and then it, it took me back to the science and the only science i could find was quantum science that can actually um explain things and um so I had another revelation, I think a, a few years after that, after the lady prophesied over me, I had a, a revelation. I just took a pen and a, a paper and then I started to draw something and something, something that, I, that just came. I, I didn't understand what I was drawing. So because I asked, how should I then start to play? How should I play to get back into tune? That was my question. So fast forward, a, a, Two years or so later, or a year later, I drew this picture. Um, I'll, I'll share it with you at some stage, but a picture of uh, the body, soul, and spirits, and, and, and how cavities form in our lives, our, in our body, soul, and spirit. And if there's a wound that's not healed, unhealed wounds, or unmet needs, or unresolved issues, or trauma, or um, bloodline um, issues, then um, our natural response is to erect a coping mechanism on top of that thing. So we're actually building a tower on that thing. And then you reminded me of a tower in the Bible that people did to reach the heavens by themselves. So then 
my ego takes over and I try to cope with this wound. So I actually build a, a, the Tower of Babel upon each and every wound that's in my soul. Mm. And that is actually why we are so confused in many things in our lives, how we don't have discernment anymore, how, why we don't um, actually have the ability to navigate through difficult situations because we are actually, um, we are like a concrete jungle in our soul with all these towers of Babel that we erected upon the things that, um, that still actually have a voice. So those are the things I think that actually your, I heard this voice, this, the sentence as well, and that your enemy is in your house. And I asked, what does it mean? And that is actually all these towers of Babel that um, we erect in our soul on wounded areas um, that still has a voice into, well, the heavenlies, I, I assume. And that is also a place where we are still vulnerable for um, the not so friendly side to mm. have an influence on our life because you recognize it recognizes the Babel uh, in our life. So I thought, okay, so now what? And then one day I was driving through town and I was in this process and loads of things happened to me. Um, like the one day um, I sat in the garden and um, I, I thought I will go, I'm going to pray in tongues. And, and that day I, I remembered I wasn't into tongues much that time. And I, well, um, not ever, I think. And then that specific day I thought, oh, no, man, I'm not going to do to, to pray in tongues. This is just something that I am making up myself now and I'm not, I'm just not going to do it now. And then it, it just, the urge just didn't leave me. And um, I sat in the garden and all of a sudden I started to pray and it was a, a different language in tongue. So I thought oh, it's just words that I'm making up. So, um, well, I don't even pay, uh, mind it. So I was sitting there and I just, when I got, um, to my senses a while later, I actually realized that I'm saying certain words over and over and again. So I thought, oh, good, I'll, I'll go and Google that. And I, 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 I wrote the sentence down as good as I understood it, uh, well what I've said, and I, I wrote it down. And then it was Hebrew. And then I scratched, I got a fright. So wow. I thought, Oh my word, I don't know Hebrew from anywhere. Never, never before. And I, 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 even, I, I didn't even know how it sounds. So, so, I, so then it got my attention. So obviously I'm saying something here, if it, it's Hebrew. And then I translated it and that was the turning point in my life almost. So when I translated it, um, it, it actually, I was praying, square out the hardened heart. Wow. And then that was very bad. I, I didn't take that well because I always saw myself as some someone with not a heart at heart. I, I, I'm actually a gentle person. I don't like conflict. I don't like, I don't like the mean things in life. But then he started to show me what is the heart and heart. And that's the heart that's full of the Tower of Babel or loads of Babel. So you can never outperform your wounds. It hardens your heart okay and then your heart doesn't bring your heart doesn't bring forth your essence okay so then fast forward a year later um i started to um get another images of my heart with loads of feeding tubes and i've, I've i haven't been into um this kind of things that you are in Elzon at that stage so i didn't know about feeding tubes and stuff i didn't know about the reality of that there is a life out there. There is actually a vocabulary out there that can describe the things that I'm experiencing in my quiet time. So I just saw this heart with loads of tubes attached to it. And I just realized those need to get off for the heart to um, return to its essence. And for if your heart returns to its essence, then you've got unity in your brain and your heart and in your body and that will create a certain power and i thought oh my goodness what is this and by my uh, then i started to to search 
the internet and I went wild just to find out what this means. But I, I was led to Hebrew 11 verse 1 where they where it said that faith is, um, what is it in English? Can, can one of you just say that verse? I'll get it for us quickly. Just say again. Hebrews. Okay, so Hebrew 11 verse 1, which is the only verse in the Bible that actually describes to us what faith is. And faith is this, I, I, don't, I just know it in Afrikaans, so I'm not sure, but, but, there's, but there's a word in that I verse that's assurance. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, so the substance and evidence is the words that got to me. And in another translation, it actually said, uh, says the assurance of things and the evidence. So all those things are tangible things. So I thought, okay, but how do I know more about this? So that is how I got to the Heart Math Institute, that word um, assurance to be, um, is assure, assure is not that strong word to me. In Afrikaans, it's got a stronger word, which is oortuig. In Engels, uh, in English, I'm not sure convinced or assured what but I know what I know what I know so and I realized I need, I'm not in tune if it comes to that and then I found the Heart Math Institute and I did all the possible courses they've got and the free ones and every single one got went through their books and um, I studied all of those things and then actually a whole new world opened up for me so in that time I wrote down all my little revelations that I had in my quiet time. We are like tuning forks and um, all sorts of the rainbow breaks through us. And I, I thought I was converting now to a, a new religion or something. <laughs> I just had the strangest, at that time, strangest revelations in my quiet time. I didn't read it somewhere. I didn't Google it. I just got it in my quiet time. So I just wrote it in my little book. I didn't understand what it was. And then I started to study from uh, Heart Math Institute and some of, some of the things started to fall, um, fall into place and perspective in my life. But then in 2019, we went to a conference in England uh, about the restoration of all things. And over there, every single one of those thingies in my, um, in my little book, all my revelations were the topics of the five-day course. So, and that was all about energy and energy healing and how, how it is actually for us. And then I understood more things. And then I came back. I actually left London with a bang and we got on the airport and there was a red knob that you're not supposed to press. And then I pressed that knob on Heathrow Airport because my bag went onto the conveyor belt and I couldn't get it. And I thought, this is the knob that you then press forward. And then every single conveyor belt in Heathrow Airport stopped for, I think, almost an half an hour. And everybody was mad. People uh, was late for their flights and they had to get an engineer out to, to fix it. So I will never forget. To fix the tunes of everyone. <laughs> Yeah, reset yes. factory settings. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what happened. Okay, so I also re got home, reset it. Okay, and then I started to implement in my life what I learned, and this is what I help people now. Only, uh, only looking back at it, I know that 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 is all the things that helped me to 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 get into tune. Helps me to get into tune, and in tune means this to me. It means. When your heart and your brain says the same thing. And um, actually, if you read um, the lost books of Thomas, um, he also talks about it where he says, if you can marry your thought and your emotions mm -hmm. and you can make them one, then you can say to the mountain, lift yourself up and throw yourself in the sea. And it's not, not a metaphor. You will become a powerful force. I think we're scared of the word powerful force. I think that doesn't um, resonate with um, us Christians or us believers in the, but it's, it's actually really significant and beautiful and belongs to us. Yes, well, if you think of people in the Bible, like Abraham was a powerful force. I mean, he went and saved Lot all by himself from five kings. And, you know, David was a powerful force. David went with his little slingshot and he killed um, Goliath. That's a powerful force. And I think it's um, 
It's not wanting to be powerful in yourself in order to dominate or take power from other people. I think it's the intention of being a powerful force that sometimes is misunderstood. If you come as a powerful force in humility, like Moses did, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's the intention of your heart. But again, if your heart and your mind is out of sync, the intention of your heart will be wrong. And so that's again mm -hmm. coming back into tune. And once everything is in tune, that powerful force is a good thing. And actually, if you're in tune, you cannot not be a powerful force. Yes. That is a Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the so result. So that's why, why the enemy works so hard at getting us all out of tune. That's why sure. he introduces trauma as early as possible in a person's life. That's why we're sitting with broken relationships and disappointments. Because if he can get us through trauma to be out of tune, are we not as dangerous to the kingdom of darkness mm. as when we are in tune? Yes, yeah, sure. That is actually... It's very significant and that I wanted to, it was difficult for me to access uh, this from a spiritual sub angle because that was a bit um, abstract to me at that stage. So I, I started to try the bottom up approach because that's why I've got a body so it must have some significance in this whole journey as well. So um, obviously, if, um, if, if you uncode your DNA, they found, I don't know if you've seen that, but in your DNA, um, just the little piece that they've uncoded is the original, uh, 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 is it Arama Aramaic, Aramaic language? Yes. And it actually translates to God within you. Mm. So God is also in the body, I, would, uh, I believe. Mm. And, and that is actually... Um, what I discovered during my revelation. So I had the revelation first, then I um, found something like that in the science. So if we're in tune, um, then everything in your body starts to work in, it, in an energetic coordination. And that is actually a very powerful word to me. So when you, your, your heart and your brain, it, um, when they are in unity or in uh, yeah, they are in tune, I like, or in sync, or um, they actually, they operate as um, incoherence. That's actually what they use the word in HeartMap Institute. So they are incoherence. Coherence is, there's a beautiful cadence between the heart and the brain. And the heart is not just a physical pump, but actually it's got a little brain on it that communicates to the, uh, communicates with the, the brain 80% of the time. So actually, the heart actually gives more info to the brain than the brain to the heart. So they actually started to discover the heart is not just a pump, there's something to the heart. And um, then they actually started to do very interesting experiments. They actually had people locked onto a monitor and then they said to them, they should actually click now enter or arrow every time they see a trauma image. So they will show them apples, nature, scenes, kids playing and then maybe a, a, a scene of a crash or something like that. And they said every time before, every time everyone actually before the, tra the, the trauma scene appeared on the screen, they would click like a few milliseconds before the, the image was even on the screen, then the people would have clicked that they, there's, a, there's an image. So they clicked before the image appeared on the screen. And then they started to follow that and see, but and the effect of our heart and how we actually, um, I, I might not use the right word now, but how we do sense life um, through our heart because of the magnetic field that's around it. So you can, you, but, but, but I'll still have to do loads more about this, but if you get this magnetic field of you with your electrical field in harmony or in sync, then you start to be, like uh, a powerful electromagnet which is the most powerful magnets out there and i think that's why maybe the law of attraction gains gain so much popularity these days because I, I think people know that there's something in that but i think the secret is to be in tune mm. and then you actually 
um, send out the frequency you're supposed to put into the world. Um, that is how I understand it. So, so then we started to uh, explore how to get people in tune. And, uh, uh, and that is actually the beautiful part because it's for everyone and it's really easy. So there's a beautiful cadence between your heart and your brain. So if your heart sends a certain signal to your brain, then you, you turn on a certain part of your brain. Mm. If your heart sends a, a different signal to your brain, you, 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 you turn on another part of your brain. So actually we can control brain states in a sense and to a degree with how we how our hearts communicate to our brain. So, and all the, the info lies in the pause between each heartbeat. Okay, so the little brain on your heart interprets, interpret, what's that word? Interprets. Interprets. Interprets the pauses between each heartbeat with its heart, heart rate variability. And then according to that, it sends a certain signal to your brain. And if that signal is irregular, then your autonomic nervous system will be out of balance and you will activate a certain part in your brain, which is called the amygdala. Now, our heart, our brain and our body and our heart are actually connected with the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is the actual body-mind connection. That is, the vagus nerve is our 10 cranial nerve. In other words, the 10th nerve that comes from the brain area and it actually plants in by the brainstem which is just beneath the amygdala and it goes through all the organs right through the body so it's got um fibers going down and fibers going up and then you as you can guess it the upward fibers are actually um more active or um sending more info in the body than the down going fibers so that's why um, gut health is also important because the vagus node goes down into the gut and it actually collects all those happy hormones that your, your stomach is supposed to create or your gut and it sends that up to your brain. So, so the, the, the vagus nerve actually takes this info from the heart and it sends it to the brainstem um, level, but the brainstem level doesn't know how to and it doesn't know what it means. So if it looks a certain way, if it's got a certain frequency, then it opens up your amygdala. It, um, and, and in your amygdala, everything is stored without name, name tags. It's not a neatly filed cabinet with all your experiences of life and all your epigenetic info and everything is in there um, with little codes and color coded and little boxes. So you exactly know what happens to you at a certain stage and why it happens to you. It doesn't work like that. So when your amygdala gets triggered, all those info just, it's like- um, Breaking like, a damn wall like, almost. Yeah, or opening up a very untidy cupboard and yeah. books everything just out and you don't I know- I just want to pause with the amygdala. That's where our fight, flight and freeze reactions come from. Yeah. And so um, we, have, we have talked about this because we did an anxiety podcast where this is also explained of how the signals are carried through. So I just want to say, if someone wants to understand that process more and how it links into this, there are podcasts on that on the website, um, on the YouTube channel. So we're not going to go into that now. You can go listen to those. Okay, perfect. Then I'll just be brief about that but it's not going true. into it but i mean not uh, we don't have to take yeah, an yeah. hour on it we, okay so what would also happens if your amygdala get activated that is also the information cycle of the body so um it's not only just a fight flight freeze fawn fragile fears kind of cycle it's also the inflammation cycle in the body yeah. so the thing is when that happens then we also don't have um emotional integration or control on a high level or on an um, integrated level and then also um, functioning starts to be a lot a lot more effort i think so you work harder to be okay okay mm. so if you sorry if that, can i just interrupt you you said something important now the inflammation it's related to inflammation in the body and so many of our health issues have its root in inflammation but we can see yes. that the root of that is actually in a disconnect between the heart and the brain. So yes. that proves how important our soul's health is, what we think, what we feel, how we process experiences. 
how that affects our physical body leads to inflammation and inflammation is the basis of all autoimmune disease, cancer, uh, allergies, all of those things come from inflammation. Yeah, and just yes. simple things, if you think of how many people you see with aches and pains in their body, you know, chronic, that's chronically mm. taken headache medication or back medication or um, restless leg or whatever arthritis. it is, arthritis, mm. you see in today's life, it, it's the easiest thing to get pain medication because everyone is using it for everything and it stems down to, to inflammation. Mm. Yes. So I think um, our bodies are created to actually heal itself and mm. um, do miraculous things given the right things. And um, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if uh, your heart brain connection and the impulse between the heart and the brain um, is coherent, then uh, magic happens in the body. So I, I just had to tell myself that I might not see it today, but in a year's time, the difference will be notable. Um, so consistency is key, actually, if you, if you tune in, don't just tune in once and think now loads is going to happen. Sometimes it takes time. But um, so if a heart and brain um, are in coherence, it means actually that um, they talk the same language and they're now forming uh, uh, electromagnet for, for that matter. And that your prefrontal cortex actually lights up and all the things that go with that, all your executive functions are in there. But the thing about tuning in is and being coherent is loads of things happen on a physical level as well. So what happened, the definition of uh, coherence, um, maybe not by the word, but it's something like this, that your heart, brain and emotions are in sync. Um, it's an optimal state of functioning in the body and the immune system, nervous system and hormonal system function in an energetic coordination. So everything is in a great cadence going on in the body. Everything does what it's do what it's supposed to do. And um, I think I think to me that is magic um, because um, I think um, they actually did a study. Uh, um, I'm not sure where, where the, the doctor actually took people that um, they well they described them as advanced meditators, but they actually just getting into it, they just attune, they just get into sync or tune in into themselves with their heart, brain, coherence. And they actually then took some of their cells and they put it into a petri dish. And then they took some cells of people that do this some of the time, not like regularly, just every now and again, they took some of their cells and put it in a petri dish. And then so they uh, took some people that don't mind the stuff. They don't believe in the stuff. So they don't even bother doing this coherence or getting into tune with themselves so then they took the uh, uh, replica or something like that of the coronavirus and they put it into the petri dishes with the cells of the people and then they actually found something significant that the, the virus couldn't penetrate the cells of the people that try to get to be in tune most of the wow. time and it infiltrated few of the cells of people that just do it every now and again but it infiltrated all the cells of the people that don't bother and they thought oh this is only by chance so they repeated it and it happened the same again and the third time they did it and they um found the same results so I even think, sorry i just, sorry i remember reading a study on why essential oils work so well also for the body when it comes to healing and it's because of the frequency that the, the, if you really get a pure good essential oil, the frequency that it's resonating at, that frequency resonates at a level that kills microorganisms that are harmful to your body. So the purpose of using the oils is to elevate your own body's frequency to such a point where something negative that might come into contact with it is dies before it in, even enters the body. And so what you are saying to me, um, uh, is, is correlating with what, and I read this study in 2020, uh, of just another way of understanding what you are saying now. And that, that totally makes sense to me. Mm. Okay. I so, wonder if, yes. I just want to say, so actually 
the heart brain coherence go further than just to be in tune because uh, be, uh, to be in tune i mean uh, um, in the sense of emotions and thoughts so they say the same thing but it also gets yourselves into tune mm. wow yes yes it's because god created us body soul and spirit mm. and i think um the key of when i started talking to kareen I always say to the students as well, we body, soul, and spirit. When you address an issue, we need to address it body, soul, and spirit. But I never had this key where Corrine speaks about getting the mind and the heart in tune. And that was just something, it was like I knew there was something, but I didn't know how to put it into words. And it was so amazing when I started talking to her uh, to hear her say that we need to get into tune. And I truly believe that if we can get the heart and the brain to be in tune, we are coming in tune, body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's just interesting as well, where Kareem said that the heart is not just a pump. Mm -hmm. uh, you, there's so much scripture that we read about the heart, where it says, guard your heart. And the Lord mm -hmm. says he circumcises our hearts mm -hmm. and that everything that's in our life springs forth from our heart. So there's a lot of scripture that also features the heart. So I think maybe we should finish off and then we'll do another podcast because I'd really like to spend some time with Kareem on how do we get in tune because we've spoken a lot now about being out of tune and the need for being in tune because mm. it affects our body, souls and spirits. But then practical little tips and advice uh, on how to get in tune. I'm also going to put Kareem's details on the comments section of the podcast. So if someone wants to contact her, you'll be able to find it there. And I just want to finish off with this last thought. I also because, have a thought. Um, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, when we do muscle testing, uh, there is a few of the studies of the HeartMath Institute that I reference and that I use um, when, when I train the students as well. And we speak of the electromagnetic energy in the body that's a carrier of information. And that's the heart-brain connection. Um, that is the thing that carries the information of all the trauma and all the experiences that we've had, everything, even every deficiency in our body um, that we need. And we can access that information through muscle testing, identify the traumas and the imbalances, deal with it. And in that way, we can also help the body, soul and spirit to become connected, to become one and to come into sync. Yeah. Um, and, and just this one last thing, then, then Natanya, you can say what you want to say, um, is that God created, created our bodies to self-heal and to regenerate. And we don't see our bodies that way. We want to put a lot of chemical stuff from the outside into our bodies. And then it just helps for a little while and we get frustrated. I just want to add something to this. Sorry, because it's just on my foreground now, because I actually got in, in contact with a neuro a top neuro um, scientist um, in America, and he actually described it this way: that we don't oppose medicine, but the thing is that um, that that unfortunately medicine doesn't create a voltage change. So we are after a voltage change in the body. We need to change the hertz in our nervous system, and that that is why other things like essential oils and what we are going to talk about then in the next podcast actually creates a voltage change between the heart and the brain and the nervous system. And that's why it actually is a lasting change. Yes. Not temporary. Amazing. Mm. It's so amazing how God created our bodies, right? Yes. And that's what yeah. I'm getting to, because if you think of Genesis, it said, God said, let's make man in our image and in our likeness and in the image of God, they were created. And um, if, if, if someone's a regular listener to us, especially to our Bible studies, I've talked about this before, that we are made in God's image. And we see there are three components to God. And so there are three components to us as well. God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we have a spirit, a body, and a soul. And so that part of us is, our, is a part of His image and also the spirit that was placed into us because God is spirit. But we grow, and this is a, a, an understanding of any biblical scholar, that our job here on earth is to grow in his likeness. Now, um, they often say that you don't need to teach a dog how to be a dog. It knows how to be a dog, but you, you need to teach a person sometimes how to be a good person. And, um, and as we come in alignment with our bodies 
and, and our spirit and our soul together, I think that's when we start living out the likeness of our creator and, and taking that image of his likeness to other people. And that's what makes us powerful. It's not us that's powerful. It's the image of God that shines through in unity through us. That's the one thing. And the other thing is that's what makes people that I think will be in alignment. They will probably be easy to get along with, easy to be around, easy to be in relationship and business and whatever with. Um, and, and that's what gives it power is the fact that it is just so easy then. It's not difficult. Nothing mm -hmm. is opposing you. And, and I'm really looking forward to when Alvan told me about this, I thought, wow, this is really amazing. And it's so cool how God took you on a totally different journey and brought you to this information and us on a totally different journey. Mm -hmm. And it's two sides of one coin. And together it's valuable. You know, if you cut a coin in half, it's not, it's not valuable. Um, but this is two sides of a coin that I think if you, if you bring it together is quite valuable. And um, mm -hmm. I just want to reiterate again, I was going to put your information in the description. If anyone wants to contact you, the contact information will be there. No, thank you. Thank you for your time and your um, sharing your story, Corinne. And we're really looking forward to doing an interview with you again. And this is just such a beautiful picture of how the body of Messiah needs to work together because mm -hmm. every one of us has a little bit of the puzzle pieces. And once we come together, we start seeing a full picture. So we really bless you with your ministry as well. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I just want to end up with this little thing that I think the more we uh, work on this kind of things, I think the more uh, uh, we, we change our own frequency, the more we actually bring heaven to earth. We actually, I see it like we tie a little knot, um, we tie heaven onto earth through ourselves. So um, and this is actually a great journey to be on. And I think every part of the journey is also part of the destination. Mm. Mm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. so thank you. For your time. Thank you for your time. We thank appreciate you. it a lot. And we see you guys on our next episode. Bye. Bye.